a little while back I did a video on not fixing my chimney. Pretty much nobody watched it, but that's okay because I didn't really help anybody with anything. Anyway, water was running down the fireplace and onto the mantle. I came up on the roof and it looked like it was just caused by debris. I thought I might have to build a chimney cricket, but it looked like we could put it off till a later day. And the leak seemed to have gone away, but then it came back with a vengeance. Yep, the chimney is getting soaked. So, Today we're going to be building a chimney cricket. Now this was a longer process than I expected, so it's going to probably end up being at least two parts. And I did make some mistakes along the way. I, I'm not a professional. I'm a DIYer. So you might want to watch it to the end, up to you, where I'll explain things I could have done better. And there will probably be people with comments on more improvements. Also, I'm going to be using what I'm going to call a hybrid technique of flashing the chimney cricket. Already got butterflies. First thing I'm going to do is determine where I actually want the cricket to be and I'm going to snap out some lines before I start removing any shingles. I've noticed a lot of people online building crickets they tend to build these little shallow crickets and I'm going to build this as steep as possible because when you got the water flowing down and you know I'm just theorizing here when you got the water flowing down the steeply pitched roof and it hits say a shallow pitch roof here it's going to continue to flow across that shallow pitch for a while but if you have it hit a steeply pitched it's going to have more of an opportunity to break and split on each side of the chimney first thing i'm going to do is level the uh, ridge now that i got my roof pitch angle i'm just going to saw through that Maybe I'll use a circular saw. I'm gonna have to move this antenna bracket, it's just in the way.
Let's find the center of the chimney. 45 and a quarter. All right. Let's see. Is 22 and 5 eighths. Yep, so that should be the same from both sides. 22, 5 eighths. 22 and 5 eighths. Right there. Now we will. Put this back here. Try to get it as close to 90 as possible. So, right about there. Just snap a line. We're getting pretty close, I guess, to seeing why we're leaking here. Let's get this up. We can see where the paint is compromised. Move this over on this side. I bet it's coming around here and running behind there. All right, let's check out this side. Nope, there are no holes in this. Well, that wasn't very conclusive. It almost looks like it was not leaking around the edges, but rather through the top. That's wet right there. I don't want to reflash this whole chimney because my problem seems to be from this side. So right now I'm just going to build a cricket. So back to the cricket build. Now I'm going to come down three and a half inches. And I'm going to cut a board that long. That'll give us our angle. Oh, height is about perfect. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm going to use this level to make sure the plywood planes in to the edge of the chimney. I snapped the line right to the edge of the brick and there's the pencil mark I made where the framing needs to go so that the uh, sheathing planes in. Snapped it to the corner of this and then I measured inside one and a half. That ended up being one and a half down there. The board I'm going to cut is going to be, the measurement's going to be from right there to where that pencil mark meets. I'm going to try to find a good spot for the camera where my rope doesn't keep flipping it over and uh, leave it there for a while and just see what happens. All right, let's experiment with a little narration here. Here I'm using a sliding bevel to get the angle between the ridge and the chalk line. Now I'm tracing the bevel onto the bottom plate, extending the line, and, well, I don't really need to explain this. Now the bevel for the bottom cut.
using the speed square here to make sure the sheeting planes in right with the roof. Same thing on the other side. I'll explain how I did these rafters in just a second. So that angle is 45 degrees. So this isn't even for some reason. This is in the center and this is running at a 90 degree angle but these measurements are different so there's something quirky with the roof. The roof sags or something over here. Let's check the bottom angle. Double check that. Let's call it 48. 48 degrees. I just loosen it up a little and then tighten it so that there's tension on it. A little bit more. And then I open it a little wider than I need to. And then I just push it into place. Tighten it, check the angle. That is 42. I don't know if you can see that. 35, 40, 41, 42. So, two on the bottom, and we'll check the bevel, loosen it up, make it a little wide, give it some friction. Push it in place. Uh, this goop is throwing it off, so I'm just looking for a nice straight line, straight down. That looks about right. And the bevel is 30 degrees, so that's the bevel's the same, close. The other one was 28, and I hit about 30, so we'll call it 30 degree bevel. 30 degree bevel. Now we just take our measurements, long to long, call it 34 and a quarter. Alright, so we'll do the bottom cut first, the seat cut, and it was 32 degrees, no, 42 degrees, a 42, so there's 40 right there, and there's 42 right there, oh, that moved, 40, 42, right there. And I want to cut that on a 30 degree bevel since this one's going to sit like that and like that. Set my saw up for the top of this bar right there is where you line it up. So there's 30 degrees. Lock it in place. Set it deep as it goes because bevels take a lot of depth. Now it measured 34 and a quarter long to long, long of the bevel, long of the angle, and a 48 degree cut. 45, 46, 47, 48. Take the bevel out of the cut. It's hard to do this. There we go. 
Let's see how it fits. Got all these screws sticking out on the other side. Otherwise, it's perfect. So I'll just back those screws out and then screw this side and then put those screws back in. There we go. Let's figure this one. Looks like 19 and a half. It's all the same angles. All right, it's getting kind of dark. We're gonna call it a night. Got all the framing done, just need to sheet it, and then we can start doing the shingles and all. <sighs> this was harder than I thought it would be.